Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. Well, you know, you'd be amazed by some of the rumors I hear about the Epoch Times, or maybe you wouldn't be so amazed. We've endured some pretty wild attacks, and there have been some pretty outlandish pieces on us. NBC News, for example, claimed we were a dark money operation for Trump because we ran advertisements of our content on Facebook. Vice claimed we were a conspiracy paper, at least associated as, as with that, because a former employee interviewed a UFO guy on a show that had nothing to do with us. The Atlantic even called me a melancholic 30-something with a thatch of thick black hair. Okay, well, maybe that last part's kind of accurate. But ironically, some of the biggest attacks on us have been for reporting what is actually true. That Atlantic piece, for example, it accused us of suggesting that COVID-19, quote, could have emerged maybe purposefully from a lab in Wuhan. You don't say. Some of the biggest hit pieces on us from the New York Times were for reporting that the Trump-Russia scandal was a hoax, which it was. In fact, it's even public record now. The public knows it. But there's also an ongoing theme to these hit pieces, which is claiming we're connected to the Chinese spiritual discipline Falun Gong. And they often package these hit pieces with what look like copied and pasted propaganda lines directly from the Chinese Communist Party, ironically used to try to justify a genocide targeting the estimated 100 million Falun Gong practitioners in China. And that's just plain old not nice. Unfortunately, this has been one of the bigger misunderstandings of the Epoch Times. So what's the real story? We were started by Chinese Americans who escaped communism. Many of our staff were persecuted or even tortured in China for their beliefs. Many of them have friends or family who were abducted or even murdered by the CCP. And because of this, they understand the risk that America faces as it flirts with communist ideas and the CCP. We've been the canaries in the coal mine on quite a few issues. And look, we've been ostracized for warning the public, but we have a pretty good track record of having gotten the stories right, although it's often too far ahead of the curve to get credit for it. So what's Falun Gong, and what's the relationship between the Epoch Times and the religion? Well, in my opinion, this is actually one of the best traits of our media. It goes into the story of how the Epoch Times was founded, and it's what we've been up against all these years. The only problem is our own story is not widely known. This actually changed quite a bit today, though, because Representative Ralph Norman, he read the story of the Epoch Times onto congressional record. He told the story of our founder and CEO, John Tong. He told the story of the quiet battle that we have endured as the Chinese community, a Communist Party has arrested our reporters, threatened our advertisers, and done everything in its power to try to destroy us. And he told a story as well of how despite these challenges, we've managed to build a global news outlet that currently holds the fourth largest newspaper subscription in all the United States. I'll play a video of that in a bit, but first let me explain a bit more of the background. The story of the Epoch Times started in context of the persecution of Falun Gong. Long story short, Falun Gong is a spiritual discipline with meditative exercise and moral teaching centered on the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. People who practice it believe in God. They're trying to be good people, and they're being persecuted for this. The Chinese Communist Party launched its persecution in 1999. That was after reports came out in China that there were an estimated 70 million to 100 million Chinese people practicing Falun Gong also known as Falun Dafa. The regime, the CCP, deemed this as a threat to their power, and they set out to destroy Falun Gong, including every single person who practiced it. The former CCP leader, Jiang Zemin, he gave orders to eradicate Falun Gong. And for the people who practiced, he gave orders to destroy their reputations, to destroy them financially, and to destroy them physically. This started mass campaigns to abduct, torture, and kill people who practiced. It included slave camps, still seen today, forms of torture that you would see in medieval dungeons. 
and unimaginable cruelties, including the live harvesting of people's organs while they're still alive, simply for practicing Falun Gong. But the Chinese Communist Party also faced a real problem. What was that? It didn't have a reason to persecute Falun Gong. In fact, Jiang Zemin was the only top member of the CCP and the Politburo who wanted to start the persecution. His previous attempts to label it a cult, often the label the media use against us ironically as well, or a danger to society, that ended up coming back with reports showing that Falun Gong did not have any traits of a cult and was actually beneficial to society. It was improving public health and improving social harmony. And go figure, you have people who are trying to be more honest and more kind and society gets better. But Jiang Zemin wouldn't have it. He ordered the CCP to manufacture a reason to persecute the practice. And what did they do? They manufactured disinformation, real disinformation. They staged fake events. They wrote fake stories and they blanketed all of China with these and had their state media broadcast these reports 24-7 as long as they could. And then they fed these fake reports to news outlets outside of China. And these news outlets around the world, including right here in the United States, spread the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda while a brutal genocide was being hidden from the world. And of course, the CCP's propaganda was easy to debunk, but who could see it? Nobody would report it. The media would not tell the world. And it was in context of this that a group of Chinese Americans decided they had to find a way to tell the world the truth. And that was how the Epoch Times started. Let me show you the video of Representative Ralph Norman telling our story. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When John Tang was earning his doctoral degree in physics at Georgia Tech in 1999, he never imagined that some 20 years later, <clears throat> he would be heading the fourth largest American newspaper by subscription count. At the time, the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, had just started persecuting the spiritual discipline Falun Gong practiced at the time by roughly one in every 12 Chinese. People would practice the slow-moving exercises in the morning in parks before going to work. Just like any other persecution campaign by the CCP, the regime relied on the media it controlled, both the state media and the private media, to demonize <clears throat> and isolate the group. In an attempt to demonize Falun Gong and to justify its persecution, the media played nonstop hate propaganda attacking this peaceful mediation group. John, who had immigrated <clears throat> to the United States, watched from afar in horror as friends were per persecuted for their beliefs. John decided to take action. Despite having no experience or investment, he started Ji Jong Yun, the Chinese edition of the Epoch Times in the basement of the home in the suburbs of Atlanta, Georgia. John was driven by a wish to provide uncensored information to not only people in China, but to people around the world. Soon, other Chinese Americans left their well-paying jobs to help John with this seemingly impossible endeavor. The Epoch Times' first reporting group was established in China in the year 2000, covering key events with a main focus on the CCP's human rights abuses. The CCP, however, sees any kind of independent reporting on its brutal human rights abuses as a threat. Within a few months, Chinese police raided the underground newsrooms, arresting every reporter and every editor. They were in prison, specifically Zhang Yuhui and Xi Jinping, who received sentences of 10 years where they faced frequent torture. The Epoch Times China operation went underground, yet the Chinese edition quickly became a leading website on Chinese current events with millions of readers. Its print, its, its print newspaper is now distributed nationwide to as, to as well as in, in, in 30 other countries around the world. Every day, many Chinese break through the CCP's internet firewall to read the Epoch Times website. All this has not been easy. Since the newspaper founding, the CCP has waged a non-stop campaign to totally destroy it. The party has threatened the newspaper's advertisers. They have launched incessant cyber attacks on its website and its IT systems, and it threatened relatives of staff members back in China. The harassment <clears throat> has, has not been limited just to China. 
In 2006, the home of then Chief Engineer Peter Lee was broken into by assailants who tied him to a chair and beat him before stealing two computers. Meanwhile, in Hong Kong in 2019, assailants started a fire in the newspaper's printing press. In 2021, armed men entered the building and used sledgehammers to smash printing equipment. The Epoch Times also inspired the Tui Dang, which means the quit the CCP movement. As a result of the Epoch Times publications of these special series, nine commentaries on the, Chi on the Communist Party, which provides the most thorough interview to date of the true nature of the CCP, more than 410 million Chinese people and counting have sought to sever their membership in this party and the, affili and the affiliated organizations. Realizing that the CCP had put enormous effort into inf infiltrating the United States of America, especially media organizations, resulting in many U.S. media carrying the communist regime's propaganda, the Epoch Times launched in English in 2003 and started a print edition in New York in 2004. The Epoch Times independent reporting has attracted a large readership in the United States, now ranking as the fourth largest newspaper in the country by subscriber count. Its website is read by tens of millions of people every month, every day. Just like its Chinese companion, the Epoch Times prides itself in being independent and serving the interest of the readers. Under the, its slogan, Truth and Tradition, the Epoch Times adheres to the best practices and highest principles of journalism and seeks to highlight the best of humanity to inspire people. Epoch Times now has editions published in 36 countries and in 22 different languages. Folks, this is all about one word, freedom. The story of the Epoch Times is a story of the American dream. It's a story of standing up against tyranny. It's a story of standing up against a wave of lies and brutal persecution and of the triumph of truth. Well, look, speaking of censorship, this show you're watching right now is censored on YouTube. So come join us on Epoch TV for the rest of it. EPOCHTV.com. Breathe the fresh air of freedom. Escape censorship. We also have a lot of great content there. We have movies, documentaries, a lot of original content. The rest of my episode, we'll be talking about Moms for Liberty facing attacks after they were labeled a hate group and what's really going on with the organization the response to that. We'll also be talking about the Ukraine war and what's happening with cluster munitions now being sent to Ukraine and what this means for possible escalation. That said, I will see you for the rest of the episode on epochtv.com, epochtv.com. I'll see you there. The American dream is under attack. The greatest country in the world is now more polarized than ever before. This is about targeting women of color. Put your mask on. It's an insult to our country as the world is already laughing at us. While we're dividing ourselves from within, while the nation is focused on internal battles, a greater threat looms in the horizon. The Chinese Communist Party. <laughs> They're systematically infiltrating our government. They're stealing our technology and they're attacking our freedoms. The FBI is opening a new China-related counterintelligence case about every 10 hours. The Chinese are preparing for war. We Americans are very good at being oblivious as to what our enemies are saying. And we did not pay attention to Osama bin Laden until one day he killed 2,977 Americans. Oh my God! This is not just a battle of ideologies or just about pursuit of dominance. This is a war that will alter the course of our lives. And if we lose, it will condemn our children and future generations to a world of unimaginable horrors. This is why my show in the Epoch Times is so critical. We're not afraid to take on the Chinese regime head on. And he said, they told me that they, if I keep talking to you, they're going to hire a hitman to chop off one of my hands. We're not afraid to call out the CCP for their atrocities. We're completely independent. Our only interest is in traditional journalism and reporting truthfully. Bizarre news today. The Chinese Communist Party is opening up police stations, departments, and while well, working as overseas bureaus, all around the world, including right here in New York. 
You heard that right. It's time to replace the Chinese regime's propaganda with truth. Get back to the basics. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All you have to do is subscribe to Epoch TV and you'll get so much more in return. Just click on the link in the description below this video and you're on your way. Baby, this is our time.